Melissa Pajoli, Life Leadership Executive and Connection Coach. The past two weeks, we've talked about sexual intimacy and emotional intimacy. If you haven't watched those videos, go back, learn about them, and then come back to this. Because today we're talking about intellectual intimacy. And a lot of people, when they hear intellectual intimacy, they don't think that it's necessarily as important as the emotional, the sexual, the physical. And it really is. Um, Depending on the type of relationship you come into with the person, past traumas, uh, just natural brain patterns, whether they're an analytical, more linear mind, uh, if they're a more introverted, uh, self-development inward person, intellectual intimacy is often misunderstood and it's not accessed and utilized as often as it could be to deepen the connection and having that deeper understanding and level of connection with your partner or spouse. So intellectual intimacy is actually very, very important. I know for myself as an introvert, I am more of the deeper, not wider. So when I get someone that I can connect to and learn about, I really like to go either deep into a specific conversation with them, or I want to learn and express what I'm learning about a specific topic. So I'll share my screen so you can have the list of the, what does it really mean to incorporate intellectual intimacy into your life? And so you can see this list here. It really is coming from the thought provoking conversations, whether you're talking about your future, uh, you seeking one another's feedback. I find that when people are married from like for anywhere from 10 to 25 years, the Seeking for feedback or validation often just kind of dwindles. And I don't know why that is, but really being mindful of asking for feedback, asking for validation, checking in, um, as well as discussing your core values and needs. As we age, our core values change. And this is really important because who you were when you were 25 is completely different than who you are going to be at 55 and what your needs were then are going to change. And if you're not able to have open, honest, vulnerable conversations, you're probably going to feel a little uh, disconnected, disrespected, or under-supported. Attending a class or a lecture is also a really great way to hone in on the intellectual intimacy. And this doesn't have to be a lecture as in professional development. It can be a cooking class. It can be an art class. It can be a dance class. Um, things that are making you not only learn a different skill, but learn something about yourself and one another in a situation that may be different to you. Um, reading a book and reflecting on it. I love to read. I don't necessarily like to talk about the books I read um, with the person I'm in a relationship with, but I'd never neglect that opportunity. Um, sharing something that you find fascinating. This is also very interesting because when we're in relationships, we often have different um, different hobbies, different interests, and it's easy to overlook like, oh, yeah, because my partner or spouse isn't interested in this, he or she won't want to hear about it. That's not necessarily true. I can absolutely want to hear about something that you're interested in, that you find fascinating, that I don't have a clue about. It, it, both of those, it can be true. So don't make the assumption that I don't want to hear about something you find fascinating just because it's not something I necessarily dive into on my own personal time. And the last thing, like I said before, is learning a new skill together. We often devalue or um, underestimate the power of when we do something together uh, and learning a new skill. A lot of things can come up, whether it's you are feeling a little insecure, whether your anxiousness, um, often trying new things can bring a deeper sense of arousal for people who um, are connected to that part of them. So when it comes to intellectual intimacy, the goal for this week is to get clear on how connected to you are, how connected are you to intellectual intimacy? How important is it to you? You may resonate more with the physical or sexual or emotional intimacy, and that is okay. But you also may be with someone who really has a deep desire to have a deeper sense of emotional intimacy. So get clear on you and the person you're in a relationship with or the people you surround yourself with. How important on a scale from one to five is it? 
And then based on their value and their priority of having more of it in their life, where and how are you satisfied with it? If it's really, really important, it's probably going to be a five. But how often are you experiencing it? Is it a two or a three? And if it's a two or a three, what actions that need to be taken to move it one number, like 5% greater? Um, this is different for everyone, but it's the start of a new year. Um, there's a lot of new things going on. So I encourage you to get out there, try new things, sign up for different workshops or classes and go deep because that's why we're here, right? See you next week.